everybody, it's Larry. Welcome to today's video. And we're going to talk about uh, deep nostalgia from my heritage. Now, initially, uh, I was kind of skeptical of this, especially for its application for genealogy. Uh, but after I looked at some of my ancestors' photos with this, and uh, to be honest, some of the ancestors' pictures are kind of creepy, <laughs> but this really, the enhancements and then the animation changed everything, and it really gave me uh, a new insight to that ancestors' looks that I really appreciated, and I so I want to bring it to you if you haven't already seen it. Now, uh, this is it, and you can see, you know, the picture. This is the original, just two people in a snapshot. And this is the animation it gives for her, and it does it based on the faces. Now, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about deep nostalgia, but, uh, you know, my heritage is calling it an internet sensation. And normally I would say, if you say this about yourself, uh, you're tooting your own horn. But in this case, I'm going to say they've earned the right to do it because let's look at this. This is the downloads on the App Store. And number one, above TikTok, above YouTube, above Instagram and Facebook, above Snapchat, number one is MyHeritage. Now, I don't care what ruler you have, that... <laughs> that is the definition of being an internet sensation. So, you know, I grew up in Oklahoma and we have a saying there, you know, it ain't bragging if you back it up. Well, saying that it's an internet sensation, that's not bragging. That just is what it is. And in fact, uh, so much that between the time I started that to here, look at that, over 16 million animations and counting. It, it was 11 when I started this. So it really is taking off. Now, what is deep nostalgia? Well, deep nostalgia is based on what's called a deep fake type technology. And it really, uh, what they've licensed is really part of what's called de-identification. And that's where you have uh, two pictures that to us as humans look the same but to computers, they can't tell them as being the same. So here, we'll take a look at this. Now here's Tom Cruise. Now, which one is Tom Cruise? Now, are you sure? <laughs> so maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong, but if we were to see this person come in or we were to say, hey, be on the lookout for this person, this is close enough for us as humans to see, but for you know a computer, these are two completely different people. A uh, computer will not recognize them the same. Uh, we've got a longer face here, a shorter face here. Uh, there's a lot of little features that really throw it off. So right here it says animate your faces uh, and animate your families. So let's just kind of go through it. Here's a picture, okay, just like the one before on the first page, a husband and wife. And what it does, it identifies the faces. And then here she is animated. So there's the photo, original photo. And there's the animation. Now, originally, like I said, I didn't see a genealogical value. Here's your picture of your ancestor. And I knew that it was DID technology. In other words, this picture right here is not this person. The face is different, shape's different. A computer couldn't put those two together. But that doesn't change the incredibleness of what it's doing in animating this. Now, some pictures it does better than others. We'll talk about that as we go along. But, you know, this was the first thing that's like, hmm, maybe. And I got a little interested. So what they did, uh, one of the My Heritage employees, Sagi Keenan, and that's him on this side, they videoed him. And you notice the one on the right, the picture, is doing whatever he does. He looks up, he looks down, he smiles and it's taking his animation and it's transferring it to the picture. So whatever he does is going from that original photo and it's making it do the same thing, which is pretty cool. And there's actually 10 different animation processes. Now, when I ask my heritage, what are they? They're like, I don't know, we film Sagi. <laughs> but uh, I did isolate those and I'll show you what one of them is later. All right, so here's another photo example that they give. Just a black and white, two people there. Actually, uh, wonderful photo. 
And then what it does is it identifies the faces. So here's the faces that it's enhanced, okay, that are in that photo. Now it's based on the way the heads are turned and the lighting that each one is getting. It's gonna give them a different default animation, which I think that is pretty cool technology. And here's those same two faces animated. She gets one animation, he's getting another animation. I think that's pretty cool. I think it'd be even cooler if it was on the big picture. <laughs> that would just be creepy. I thought it was gonna be creepy anyway. It kinda is, but still very impressive nonetheless. So here's another picture. She's looking to the left. She's got a little bit different lighting on her because she got the shadow uh, on her forehead from her hat. And he's looking at the camera. She's looking off. There are the faces identified. You can see she's looking off with the shadow. He's got more light on his forehead looking straight at the camera. And they get two completely different animation sequences. She turns, looks to the camera, and smiles. He kind of nods, slight grin, blinks, moves. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. So, uh, basically, you upload your photo and it does animation. So we'll go through that process, but I really want to talk just a moment more about the de-identification technology it's based on. So the company, as you'll see, it'll say it's licensed by DID. Right here it says licensed by DID, all right? And that's this kind of, And what they do is, you know, they map the face and uh, then they run an algorithm on the face to change it up where a computer can't recognize it. Now, why have they done this? Well, you know, for privacy reasons, people, you know, we get scanned all the time. We get scanned walking down the street, on, in airports, train stations, and, you know, our identities, we're being tracked. And so with privacy laws, companies are starting to not be allowed to do that, and governments, you know, are being kind of reined in from what they're doing as Big Brother. And so there's still a need, you know, if you have a picture of a criminal, uh, like that one we started the video with, uh, one was Tom Cruise, one wasn't, you say, be on the lookout for this, and you have that picture stored, then a, a human can look at that and see when that person comes in, but without the identity of that person being revealed to anybody along the way. Uh, I can hear you know arguments on both sides. That's not what it's for. This is about genealogy. But they are indeed the technology behind deep nostalgia. All right, uh, and it's pretty cool. All right, so now a little bit about the deep fake. And you know you can see you know, it was a viral sensation on YouTube. This one only has 822 views, but this is it. Basically, what it does it strips out the face of the person. Okay, and puts another person's face on him. All right, does a little magic here. That's what they're they're saying here. And we, you know, through the the magic of AI, uh, it's created you know this portion which is his face. Then it's masked out everything else, and it sticks somebody else's face on there. And then afterwards, you're like, well, which one's the real face? And it gets really hard to tell. You can stitch anybody's face in there. But see here, it's going through the whole animation. It's not a still picture. You know, it, it's him. It's just with somebody else's face on there. So which one is it? <laughs> Even Tom doesn't know. So if you want to learn more about deep fake, there's wiki articles out there on deep fake technology uh, where you can tell about it. And if you're really geeky and you want to develop something like this yourself, there's actually some source code now. It's not the DIDs version. This is the deep fake where it stitches one face onto another. Uh, but you can get the source code for free and develop your own if you'd like. All right. So let's get into it on the My Heritage site. So the way you get to it is you go to Family Tree, go to Photos. Now, if you click here on Animate Photos, it's going to ask you to upload one. Okay, I've already uploaded some, so we're just here at My Photos. Now, you can see I did different things. Now, one of the things I did was Albert Einstein. I got, you know, a royalty-free version of Albert Einstein. Here's the picture of it. Okay, there's the original. That was the enhanced. I thought that was pretty cool. And it identified one picture right here. Now, the way you get to that before you get that is you have to click Animate up at the top like we did. And then there's Albert Einstein, somebody I never would have been able to meet or see a video of other than you know some classroom lecture that might have put me to sleep because I'm not that good in physics. <laughs> but here it gives the default. See here it says the default for this picture is number two. So we're gonna pick number two and see what it recommended that I should be using. Last time I looked, it was at number one, so it was still there from last time, all right? And there's a total of 10 animations, as I said, that it goes through. 
and each one has a different pattern uh, of him looking and smiling, looking up, down, everything. So all 10 are different. And I asked my heritage, what are these based on? How do you, you know, one through 10, how does it know which one to pick as default? And they didn't have an answer for me. So being the investigative person that I am, and also the analyst I am, that didn't work for me. <laughs> so I did find out and I'll share that with you at the end. All right, so uh, again, you take a still picture. Here's Anne Hathaway. Uh, you know, this is a royalty-free picture. We have this, we, animation seven was her default. Shows her moving around and blinking more. And it's almost like you're there at the red carpet. I thought that was really impressive. That was a little red carpet press conference uh, or walk photo shoot they do when they walk in. Uh, now, I tried to do animals. Here's my dog. And so uh, I said, well, okay, let's see if it'll animate. Uh, yes, it's a Dotson. Uh, so right here I went to animate and it says, this photo cannot be animated since we couldn't detect any faces. Try animating another photo. So we will not do animals for the most part. You might get lucky on, you know, St. Bernard or something that has more of a round face has big eyes. I don't know, but uh, maybe if I had a close-up, I didn't try with every type of animal face. This was good enough for me in my experiment. But this I found interesting. All right, so this is, uh, you know, a Disney character, and here's the real character, okay? And then here is one that was normalized. In other words, it's already been altered. And so I went to look at it and said, I wonder what this does with our, our cartoons. Now, look at here. It only recognized one face. And it only recognized the fake face. It didn't recognize the real one, the original. It only recognized the fake face. And it did recognize it, so now I can animate it. Now, I might be able to actually create a 3D uh, image, uh, but I could never animate it like that. I just don't have that skill set. But I thought that this was pretty cool because I can actually drop through and look at all, here's number one was the default for this one. I can go through all of the different animations for this and see different movements for a cartoon. That was really kind of cool to me. So here was a still photo, and it's, <laughs> it's that same one we did of Albert Einstein. I'm looking around, and then it'll focus back towards the middle here in just a second. That's kind of creepy. All right, so this is really, really neat in a way. But this is the photo that really changed my mind, right here. Now, this is really about the only picture I have of my grandmother. Uh, and I can tell from here, you got blush on the cheeks, uh, lipstick on, hair's done up, dressed up to the T. This was somebody who said, I want to take a good photo for all time, for posterity. And I can tell you firsthand that when this is blown up and put on the wall, it is kind of scary. It's just one of those pictures, you know, <laughs> it just is. And so I went through here and I ran it through the MyHeritage process. And this is what it looked like in hands. Well, that changed it quite a bit because it toned down the lipstick, got rid of the blush. And now I, I really get a better photo. And that was just from there. But then when I animated it, okay, uh, that really changed it for me by by seeing this picture putting them into that 3d light you know coming from this original photo right here to that that was just impressive now for her the default is number seven there's different ones uh like i said they filmed uh, sagi going through 10 different animations all right so when I saw this photo, I thought this whole thing about animating dead people, the whole concept was creepy and not genealogical. But then after I saw this, after I saw what I had that, i just be honest, it felt like a creepy photo, turn into a 3D human-like photo with a bit of animation to give it that life, it completely flipped my opinion on this, completely flipped it. All right, I was wrong. Uh, this is cool. This is way cool. I, I will tell you, I believe you get a few if you are free. If you have a full subscription, you can do unlimited. Uh, I don't know if you're going to find that, you know, buying the full subscription is worth it for you, but it's darn cool. Darn cool. I mean, really, really 
cool. Uh, it does seem to do better the darker the skin tone. So, uh, you know, I have a lot of photos of families and friends that are Hispanic or black. And I will say this, that the darker the skin tone was because of the way it does the lighting and the flipping as far as its sources and its algorithms, it does seem to do better the darker the skin tone. The whiter the skin tone, you can kind of see more of the, you know, the flipping. Uh, but it, it seemed to be the darker the tone, the less flipping that I could visually see. Now, uh, as I was saying here, you know, which one's the right Tom Cruise? I'll let you guess. All right, so about the lighting. So every picture that's taken, obviously, you know, the person's right here and the camera's, you know, at some position in front of them uh, or, you know, behind them or whatever, but it's going to be in front of them if you're going to get a face. And so what you have is a 360 wheel, and that is where the lights are. So the lights go around this circle. This is a 90 degree angle, 180 is from behind, 270 is from this side, all the way to 360 back where you started at zero. All right. Now, interestingly enough, the light, you know, the person sitting there, we're looking down at the tripoded camera. That's a little mini camera from the top. And this is if, if the light was behind it. So this would be, uh, angle zero the light here would be zero this would be light at 90 light at 180 light at 270. now the camera can be or the light can be above the camera looking down at an angle and that's down say 45 or the light can be below the camera and be up 45 degrees now i checked at 45 degree angles so you know there were eight spots around the wheel here at a zero horizontal and then there were eight spots at down 45 and eight spots at up 45. Eh, it sounds kind of complicated. It's really not. You'll see it in a sec. All right. So what that means is there were 10 animations. All right. And where the light position was. So here's that light position zero from in front, zero, zero. So if like in that picture of my grandmother, the lights at zero, zero, you're going to get a 10 or, you know, might be here uh, zero and down 45. Uh, you might get an eight recommendation or an up 45. You might get a three recommendation. Now, if you don't get that for this chart, you might want to go back to here and look at this and see, well, maybe I should look at this animation. It may be good too, because it picks the optimal based on the colors, the amount of flipping it's doing, the light source, the camera angle and stuff like that. But almost, with all that other stuff, it seemed to be very consistent to the light position around the person, whether it be at 270, at 90, 315, 45, the light position. And that was that camera in front, but that light going all the way around in that 360 circle. And then the angle of the light, whether it be zero, horizontal with the nose, uh, pointing up at a 45 degree angle or down at a 45 degree angle. So with this combination in the circle and this on the up and down, this is where it tended to end up in the chart. Now, lastly, the length of the videos you get from each animation are a little bit differently. Okay, so number one is 12.25 seconds. Number two is 12 seconds, 13.15. Some of them are longer, 17.12. So yeah, this one's only 10. So there's actually a seven second difference between animation five and animation six. So if you want a longer animation right there, and over in these, and then if you want the shorter ones, the first couple and number six, all right? So uh, when I asked my heritage, they're like, what's the pattern? Because I wanted to know the pattern so that I could say, okay, well, this person's looking left, and I think that you know one that looked left and they're looking left might be better. I was actually wrong on that because it just made the next stretch. <laughs> but uh, this is, you know, number one. You can see right here, animation number one. Starts with your original photo. The person will blink. They will tilt their chin up. And then at the one second mark, these are the seconds. Uh, they'll gaze straight, glance to the right. Then they'll blink. Head turns right, squint, purse their lips. Tilt back and gaze up, blink. Look down a little bit, blink and adjust. Blink and smile, gaze right, turn right, tilt their head down, long blink, and then another blink, and then focus back at the camera. That is the sequence for number one. And all 10 of them have a unique sequence. Now, I'm not going to read all the sequences to you, but that in essence is what, what you have. Now, one more thing before I let you go. Right here, when you do the play animation, when you find the one you want, so this is animation number one. Okay, and that was the head tilt up, 
you know, blink, smile, and then they'll come back to the, you know, looking forward. All right. All you have to do to save this is click download. Okay. And you can do save, file, or you can do open with. Now, if I do open with, it's just going to open the, this video. All right. And I found that this is really cool. This is really cool. So you can do save or you can view it. If you want to, you know, watch it later, do save file. And so for Firefox, you can see right here, it's saving it there. And so it's right there where I can use it. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, deep Nostalgia by MyHeritage. So MyHeritage has brought the deep fake technology to the genealogy world. And I think it's really, really cool. Really cool. Uh, like I said, at first I did not, but uh, I've played with it quite a bit now. And I put it through its paces. I can tell you the animation steps for all 10. I can tell you how long they are. I can say this. The file sizes are not the same. And that's because, you know, the number of pixels, uh, or excuse me, the colors and the number of pixels required to make those colors for a certain length of time, the way they're stored in a file is, you know, give me three white spaces, two blue spaces, seven white spaces. Well, if it's got a lot of colors and it's going one of this, one of this, one of this, one of that, it has to identify that at start and stop, start and stop locations. And so the file is a little bit bigger. But still, they're all very small files. They're very short lengths of time. Uh, they're compressed when they come out. Uh, they come out in an MP4 format, which you know is playable on your phone. So check this out. I mean, at least check out the free versions, like you could the pictures, and and check out. But you know, look and see which pictures you would like to see that animation for. And then check it out for that photo. Since you have, you know, on the free trial, you have a limited amount you can do. I would definitely pick like a couple of photos you'd like to see. What I would recommend based on this is, you know, pick the one that maybe that photo that is uh, not the favorite. Because in this case, this was one of my lesser favorites. But it was the one that changed my mind completely you know, when it did the, the DID portion and started animating that, it just, it completely changed my mind. Now, there are some editing things you can do with it, uh, but I'll leave that for a later video at another time. All right, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. This is really cool. This is really cool. All right, uh, well, I'm getting ready to take a bit of time off. Uh, I know I've already had some time off, but uh, I'll be back in about 10 days. All right, so we will see you then.